Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Paranormal Central. Yep, that's it. <laughs> uh, thank you for showing up wherever you are around the world. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Gonzalez. And I'm Robin Kelly, <laughs> and welcome to Paranormal Central. That's right. <laughs> uh, I, I can't wait till you get back, actually come in here for the first time, because it, you know, it, it's all going to change. The whole atmosphere, the whole vibe, everything is going to be a lot more smoother, but... Uh, for all those, as you know, uh, Robin is broadcasting from her house because of the weather. And my studio is awfully warm. And I would not want her in here melting away because that would be bad TV. Well, wait a minute. It could be good TV. <laughs> <laughs> no? No. <laughs> I, I would look like Lobster Girl. My face turns feet red in the heat. So. <laughs> now, we, we can get a lot of viewers that way. Okay, never mind. Um, anyways, all right. Thank you guys for showing up. I appreciate it. We're broadcasting on Thursdays is our day that we broadcast a paranormal-only show. And that uh, for the summer schedule is at 7 o'clock because of the weather. Where we live in Fresno, California is basically the desert. So right now, I think today was like the hottest day, like 104, 105, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe a little lower than that. I'm not sure. But it gets really warm. And uh, for those who have been following me for years, uh, this is how, what I do every year. You know, during the summer, I go either later, usually about 8 o'clock. But this time we're going for 7 um, because it's just it's just too warm in here for me. Um, but thank you guys for showing up. All right. Um, we have a website, paranormalcentral.net, paranormalcentral.net. As you can see, Robin is new, and I still have to take the old photographs off the old website, and I'll probably do that this weekend, um, because we haven't taken any photographs yet, because it's been hot, it's been the summer. So once it gets cool, uh, Robin and I are going to go get some photographs taken, so we can plast them all over the place. So bear with us as we, you know switch transition. around yeah transition yeah. <laughs> there you go that's what i'm looking for transition so all right okay guys thank you guys for tuning in um as you if you guys yes, were watching I'm, I'm looking forward to it yeah i no go ahead i can't i you're cutting out i want to make sure it's not me um, I, I couldn't hear you check one two three check one two let me turn up the volume a little bit over here hold on let me see if i go over here and I know we're, we're, we're right now we're putting out at about um, 150 meg. So I'm, I'm, you know, my signal is nice and strong. Check one, two. Can you okay. hear me? Sounds better Sounds now. Better? It was just a weird glitch for a second, but I sound, sounds great. That, that's weird. Okay, cool. All right. For those who were watching us last Thursday, I, um, I got a call. As you guys all know, I have a 24-hour hotline. Uh, and I've had that forever, for probably over 15 years. And it's a cell phone with a phone number attached to it and that number is out on the internet worldwide and I get calls from all over the place and um, you know a lot of times most of the time I get them from here in the valley but now I get them Texas Louisiana New York I get them from all over and uh, I got a call from Northern California I'm not gonna say what city this lady called me she lives near a river and she experiences a lot of stuff on the other side of this river and um, she told me, you know, I, I, I don't know who you are, Jeff, but um, I'm trying to find somebody who's not going to make fun of me, basically. And she started telling me she has Bigfoots on the other side of the river. And I started to, you know, we started to talk. And she says that there's a family on the other side of the river, which is awesome. Because if those who have been watching this show forever, you guys know that we have the Kings River east of Fresno. And we have families of Bigfoots there as well. You don't have to go up to the mountains anymore, guys. You don't. You just need to know where to go, where to look, and, um, and you'll find them as long as you know what you are looking for. You know, the signs, the, um, the sticks, um, uh, footprints. Um, you know, I, I, you know, stick figures that they mess around with and they position them in certain ways and their little huts and there's, I know that there's certain names for them, but, uh, but yeah, they're all over the Kings River, guys, Avocado Lake, the foothills. You don't have to go up to the mountains anymore, but right now, since it's hunting season and once the winter comes out, comes about, the Bigfoots go to a lower altitude, lower elevation. And that's why they come down to the valley floor, Kings River, for one thing, 
They love oranges. We are the breadbasket of the world here in Fresno, California, Central San Joaquin Valley. We grow everything here. And, and, and what we grow goes all over the world. You know, I, and I was telling my wife that, you know, you go to the grocery stores to go buy fruits, and it's from other countries. Mm-hmm. It's like, why can't you get them from here locally, you know, ship them right yeah. to the front? But, but no, they don't. We get them from other countries. So the best thing to do if you want to get fruit is go down and purchase them off the side of the road where they sell them yep. on these. <laughs> that, that's what I do. You know, I, same, 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 here. same goes with the vegetables and, you know, the, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's what we do. Instead of, you know, getting them from other countries, man, I'm going to go buy them here locally. Gosh, it, it yeah. just it boggles the mind. But, yeah, uh, it's beautiful, beautiful produce. We're very lucky. Yes. You know, we do have a lot. And it smells really nice when those uh, orange blossoms and the the heat, the smell in the air is just really gorgeous. So no wonder the Bigfoot come down the mountains. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it smells yes. It's yes. lovely. Yes. And they come down here. They love the oranges, the lemons, all, all the fruits and vegetables. They just munch on. It's just smorgasbord for them. Uh, so I know where they're at. And for those who have been following me forever, you guys know where they're at because you guys get the hints. And I don't really, you know, keep it top secret. The Kings River is the Kings River. You go, you can go anywhere down the Kings River as long as you know what you're looking for. Best time to do it is to go at night, early in the morning, and and go to the places that I tell you to. And I guarantee you, you're going to get spooked. <laughs> so, so this lady I was talking yeah. to her. Yeah. So uh, this lady I was talking to, she says that. She sees them on the other side of the river all the time, and uh, the only camera she has is her cell phone. So one day she saw one. I guess it was drinking water, and it turned around and started to walk away, and she grabbed her phone and was able to take a photograph as it was walking away. Now, she sent it to me, and I'm going to show it to you guys right now. It, um, You know, when you talk about Bigfoot, Bigfoots come in different sizes and shapes. It's just not the Patterson-Gimlin film for all those people who know what I'm talking about. That is the Bigfoot that everybody is familiar with. The, the ripped, the muscle, the 7.5 you know, feet tall, 8 feet tall. Um, that's when somebody says Bigfoot, you know, Harry and the Hendersons. You know, so, mm-hmm. something like that pops up. But what I'm going to show you tonight doesn't look like the shape of a Bigfoot would be, like he's all ripped and everything. Um, if, for those who are f- familiar with the Freeman Bigfoot video, all right, there are Bigfoots that get really fat, and they're not what you think they are, but they're big boys. And, they, and, and, and this one I'm going I'm to show you, and I'm going to show you another one that I got like seven years ago. They remind me of the McDonald's Gremlin. Now, wait, 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 wait. What is the purple... The big dude. Grimace. Grimace. Thank you. <laughs> Not Gremlin. The Grimace. Yes, Grimace. Grimace. This yes. is what it reminds me of. Grimace. Now, what what did Grimace eat? What was his? Do you remember? I I don't remember. What, what, what was it like a Sunday or a? Because every every single McDonald's had its own food or soda, right? Oh, the shake. Yeah, was... Straight shake. Um, uh, okay. Blueberry shake, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure what what shake it was. I just remember the Hamburglar. Right. And he's, the Grimace scared me. I remember because they used to have the people that dressed up out in front of McDonald's on certain, you know, weekends. Uh-huh. And there's no way I'd get near that thing. He scared me. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I, I'm pretty sure our fans know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, yeah. so I, you know, um, fry. Oh, fries? Some Russell Allen says he represented the fries, the French fries. I thought there was the fry guys. We're all well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There was the, the fry guys. guys, right? Yeah, yeah it was all. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but anyway, that the grimace is what um, it reminded me of. So what I'm going to do is, I when she sent me the picture, I looked at it and I'm going, okay, um, it could be. And then I said, could you do me a favor and go to the same place where you took this photograph and take another photograph just to show me this thing wasn't, it's not there anymore, you know, before and after shot. Because it, it could very well have been a burnt tree stump or a tree stump in general. And, and she took another photograph, and sure enough, it wasn't there. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to put up the picture first that she sent me. And then um, I'm going to, let me get rid of me here real quick. 
All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to on my phone is I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to be able to zoom in on it. So right now I'm just going to show you the picture in general right there. Now you guys are probably going, where is it? Where is it? Well, it's up there in the top. And you can see the big black thing. Now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my phone and I'm going to pull it up here. And then I'm going to show it to you and we're going to zoom in on it. All right. Let me take off these here real quick. I'm going to go. There. I've been anxious to see this since there. you told me. Okay. I've been. <laughs> okay. All right. It's going to be new for me too. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're not familiar with the Bigfoot period. So, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do. Oh, actually I can do this, huh? I go there and then go there. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I won't do that. I'm just going to pull it up and, and pull it up as big as I can do it here. All right. <clears throat> okay. Mil milkshakes. It was the milkshakes. Yeah, that the people are still on the ch chat trying to figure out what Grimace was. <laughs> milkshakes. I thought it was milkshakes. All right. Okay, so there is the thing. And I'm going to see if I can zoom it in a little bit more. All right. Now, like I said, this does not look like Patty. All right, this not, doesn't look like even close to the Patterson-Gimlin film. This guy is a big dude. Now, I'm going to zoom in. Out. I, I, I'm per, I'm, I try to analyze this. I think I can see the, the shoulder and the arms. It's, I, I'm, it's, it's walking to the right. All right, you guys? Um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can edit this while I got you guys on. All right, let me go to... Marker. All right. This is the um, the arm. This is the shoulder. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to erase this now. All right. So this is the shoulder. And this is the arm. See that, guys? This is the head, I believe. This is the butt. All right. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave. Oops. I'm going to leave that. So that is the butt right there. All right. Um, she said, this is what she said. She said that the face didn't have any hair. Now, there is some white. There is something white right there, as you can see it. See it right there? I'm going to see if I can circle it. I don't know what that is. That. So I can't make out the, maybe this, this tree, this, this bush, whatever, this leaf is blocking the head and it goes up even higher. That could be, that very well could be the, 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 the chest part. So it's really hard, but I think, I mean, it looks like a large gorilla. Yes, it's massive. All right. Um, and I, I mean, this right here could be the chest. This is, I think this is the shoulder and this is the arm right there. Okay. That's what I see. And like I said, this is the butt right there. Now, take it for what it's worth. I'm I going... do think it's possible. I do. I mean, um, but I I want to see the picture with without. Did you? There's a picture. Have... There's a, yeah. There's a picture without right there. Okay. And I'm, it should come up here pretty on, on your end. It should come up. I know there's a two minute okay. delay or a minute and a half delay. Yeah. Um, so, so bear with me if I'm not yeah, responding. No. It's because I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, not a problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them both up together, side by side. If I can do this, let's go boom. And then boom. So there's the rock to the left. And then if you look at the other picture, there's the rock. So it would actually be right there. So it's not there. All right. Like when I first saw it, I said, I've seen, you know, I, I, I have seen tree stumps that are burnt. But, you know, this is the river. This is not the forest. This is, they haven't had any fires there. Um, 
So I'm gonna I'm going to say yeah it's it, brown I yeah brownish black. That's what I see. Um, it's a big boy. I can tell you that right now. It is a big dude. And like I've said before, they came. They come in big sizes. Oh, let me put up this one here for real quick. Let me go there. Let me go there. I wonder if that pathway is for regular people, or is that like a trail I, that they have made? I, did you ask her if um, she had a lot of foot traffic in the um, area? She says she has found footprints. Definitely footprints. And she even mentioned to me, she goes, I found a footprint that only have four toes on it. And I've heard wow. of that in the past where, where, you know, they find footprints, but there's only four toes. Sometimes the either the pinky or the thumb part of the big toe seems to disappear somewhere and they just don't see it and they just assume it's four toes. But um, it, I, I don't know. I mean, this one or these could very well have four toes. I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, this is a big boy. Now, I'm, I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you. When Ellen was, was with me, and this, well, I'm talking about eight years ago, almost 10 years ago, we were on that part of the studio. Somebody called in, and they were like in Kentucky. And he was driving down a road, and he looked through his side window and he saw this thing, a big thing moving behind a tree. And he stopped and got out and started taking some pictures. And when I saw this one that this lady sent me, I, right away, it looked like the one the guy sent me from Kentucky. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go to the one from Kentucky and I'm gonna show you that one. Now this one from Kentucky Again, I have to zoom in because he was pretty far away from the road. Okay, here it is. Now, what this thing was trying to do, it was trying to hide behind a, a tree, but the tree wasn't very big. Okay, do you see it? It looks like the butt is on the right and the head is up on the, on the top left-hand corner. Do you guys see that? I'll, let, uh, I'll leave it up for a bit. Yeah, leave right. it up because it hasn't shown. Yeah, it hasn't showed up yet. This one looks like Grimace. Okay, the one you're going to see right now looks like Grimace from a far distance. And tell me when you see it, Robin. I see it. Okay. I see it now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to back off a little bit. Do you bit. think it could have been? Do you think it could have been pregnant? I. Because uh, now thinking of the shape, I'm thinking. Maybe these are, are pregnant I, ones. They'd probably be slower moving, you know, uh -huh. if trouble was to arise. Because, you know, when you're <laughs> carrying a, a, a baby, you know, right. it's difficult. No, yeah, I, I never really even thought about it bring, being pregnant, either one of these, yeah. to be honest. I just saw it to be a very big thing. And he... Um, took a photograph of the same location after he came back. I think he was going on a, on a um, he was delivering something and he came back and stopped at the same place. And this was where he took the photograph. It's right there on the far right log. It was hiding behind that one. So obviously it's not there anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, when you talk about Bigfoot, these things come in different shapes and sizes. They do. True. Most of the time, they will be very tall, slim, very buff on the top, the shoulders. I mean, Alan, you know, and other people have described them to be football players with steroids, big time. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because you know they're hiking and living off the land. Yep. They're going to be very athletic. Especially if they're dismantling wild animals, ripping limbs off, you know, they're, they're strong. They, they got to be dang so. strong. Exactly. So let me go yeah. ahead and put up the picture again for you guys to see it. Go there, go there, and I'm going to open it up a little bit. All right. So, yeah. You My know, first thought is this is a, this was maybe a female that's pregnant cooling off down near the water. Could be. Uh, you know. That's that was my first instinct. And like seeing all of the like 
different textures and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's almost like dreaded hair, like there matted, you, there you like go. extremely matted. So yeah. it's, sometimes it's hard to like see like the definition. Right. But just from, you know, seeing like, unfortunately, the homeless people or stuff around here, their hair gets really matted mm -hmm. and caked with dirt. And that's what that looks like to me. Yep. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, you can see definitely fur, though. You can definitely see fur. I can see mm -hmm. fur. Um, yeah. and, and I'm trying to make out, and I, and I think when she took a photograph, she cut part of the head off. I think that big old yeah. leaf right there is blocking, I think, the most important part. And I think it's the face. The head. Yeah, the head. Yeah. And, um, I, and, and at this point, you know, I don't know which way it was looking. If, if it was walking away, then it was walking away. Um, I, you know, once we get her on the show, I eventually want to go down there. And uh, I, I asked her, and she said, yeah, you know, you can go down there. And, and um, as long as we don't give away the site where she's at. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I want to go on the other side of the river and look for signs, mm -hmm. look for footprints, look for tree breaks, the whole nine yards. And if the – she said she took this in 2021, which was last year. So it wasn't that long ago. All right. So which means that I'm, I'm hoping that the brush and the foliage is still almost the same size because I would like to go out there and stand in that same spot. And I'm six one and I'd like to see um, how tall this thing was. You know, that's the whole yes. idea of going out there and to figure out what this thing is, how tall it is, how fat it is. But that is definitely. Am I going to say it's a Bigfoot? Well, right now. Confidence is pretty high that I'm going to say it is because she, again, when I spoke to her on the phone, it's an older lady. She's probably in her 60s or 70s. It's, you know, she was very hesitant about coming on and, and hopefully I can still convince her to come on so she can tell us there's other things, not only Bigfoot walking around her property. And uh, she's going to ex hopefully explain all that to us. And we're talking aliens and ghosts and the whole nine yards. So I think, she, and I told her, I got a feeling you have a portal on your property or behind that river. And, um, and she said, I think I do. Um, and, it, it, and, and I'm pretty sure she does. So, but there you go. Um, so there's, there's your Bigfoot guys. Like I said, uh, I, I, I believe her. I know how to, when I, I've interviewed a lot of people in my, in my days, like I said, I've been doing this for 18 years. And I can tell when people are trying to pull a fast one on me, especially over the phone. And, um, and I can tell she was not lying. She's not wanting to get any, uh, and, well, she, you know, it, it, she just wants to know what's going on. Um, and we talked about <clears throat> aliens and, and she even said, you know, Jeff, I think aliens are not what we think they are. And she thinks that they may be demons. And I'm going, I think you're, headed on the right direction there. You know, I'm pretty sure there's aliens from, you know, other galaxies and maybe other dimensions, but I think you're onto something there because I asked, when she called, I told her to go look for my channel because she, she had never even seen a show before. And uh, she just got my number on the internet. So she had no idea who I was. And I said, do me a favor, go to Paranormal Central. And, I, and she went and watched um, the Adolf show. And she came back and said, I love the way you asked him to use the, the Jesus Christ in their name uh, to get rid of the demon. She goes, I, I've been trying to, she goes, I've been trying to tell people that forever and nobody listens mm -hmm. to me. So I think there's something there. And like I said, she didn't know who I was. As a matter of fact, when she texted me once, she goes, is that you on the internet? And as far as doing the show, I'm going, yep, you're speaking to him. So she had no idea who I was, which is even better. Because um, yeah. you know, that tells you that you know she hasn't been doing research on me, and she's not going to call in and do a uh, try to pull a hoax or anything like that. So uh, yeah, it's not like she's doing it for fame. She wants to remain anonymous. Oh yeah, yeah, which she, is uh, yeah, she, nice. yeah, yeah. She asked me that. Okay, um, can you change my voice? And I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I can because she has a particular voice. She says if anybody out there that knows her happens to hear that voice, they're going to know exactly it's her. And I'm going, well, nobody probably is going to listen, but I will do it. I, that's not a problem. My mixer has the effects. I can throw some effects on there and, um, and uh, change your voice. And, and I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm just going to say north of Fresno, and I'm just going to say it's between one and three hour drive from here. So it, it's not close and it's not far, uh, but it's definitely drivable. And uh, hopefully 
maybe pretty soon since it's on the valley floor. We don't, you know, it's not going to be up in the mountains, and we can pretty much go there any time we want. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think I, I think we definitely want to take a road trip. So, all right. I agree. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, I, be I fun. really think we'll get a lot of answers too. I just have a feeling this is going to be a good spot. Yep. I, you know, that and Avocado Lake, I mean, it, it, everything is right here. We really don't have to go very far, to be honest. We don't. So that's awesome. No, we're very, we're very lucky yeah. because Cal- California is a hot spot. Um, what was it? The five most likely states to have Bigfoot are Washington, California, Florida, Ohio, and Illinois. So, <laughs> well, Thank God we're, I live here in Fresno. Yeah. I would have never thought in a million years. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> when I came in contact with David Ragosa, who put me in contact with Bigfoot, when he called me, he said, hey, do you want to go with me to a spot to go put up cameras? I almost passed out when he said that. It's like, this is a dream that I've had all my life was to go and look for Bigfoot. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? We're going to look for monsters. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> it's like every, every child's dream is, is to go hunting monsters. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of people out there who watch the show who keep you know, asking me and telling me, please let me go with you. Please let me go with you. Well, I, I can't take everybody with me, unfortunately. I mean, you guys... Avocado Lake and the river is right there. If you're not chicken enough and you want to take friends with you, um, you can go up there during the night or early morning hours and do wood knocks and yells. And I got a feeling you're going to get rocks and boulders thrown at you. But a lot of people are scared. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, wear a hard hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, the, the, bo- the boulders that have been thrown at me and a couple of my buddies are probably the size of basketballs. Um, and you know, when it hits the water, it makes that distinctive sound of not pebbles, but yes. And as you, you know, when we were kids, I loved throwing rocks in water and I mm-hmm. know how the sound, what, what sound makes uh, at a particular size of a rock. Well, I, I've had, I've only had it done once to me and it was a couple of my friends and near the King's River, and the complonk was like, what the frack? You know, and this was like <laughs> at 12 midnight, no one else was around. It's like, oh, my God, that was so awesome. And we got out of there. <laughs> yeah, that sounds scary. Um, I, I, I'm, I would like to go. I think it'll be fun. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. Um, how, how, I assume you've taken your wife. Does Do they send 10 to come around more with women? Yeah. Are they more? No, they do come around with, uh, around, uh, okay. If you go camping and stay the night mm-hmm. and you take women with you, then they are attracted to the woman's voice and probably smell. And also children, because when my son Christian was younger and they would come around a lot more with both my wife and Christian to the point where sometimes we had to go inside the trailer because they were awfully close. Um, Yeah. And I never let out. I never let Christian out of my sight. I mean, I was like within five feet everywhere we went, you know, him and I hiking around. It's like I never No, There's one thing you want to do is. For those who know about 411 and, and, um, and you know, kids would be with their parents at a campsite and the, the kids would be playing ball and they would throw the ball behind a tree and that's the last time they ever see them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's that fast. It happens. Yeah, it, it happens, happens so quickly. So quick. Yeah. And they never see them again, unfortunately. So. Yep. 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 So. It's a little nerve wracking, you know, because I, I, I don't know what to expect. You know, yep. I don't know if I will be a target. Speaking um, of speaking. Well, well speak- act- actually, it might be. So I took Beatrice and the family not too long ago. And um, it was very. They came around because of the gift mm-hmm. that Beatrice had in the kids. Okay, so oh. if you have that gift, they yeah. very well may sense that, and they very well may be coming up. They were a little hesitant at first, and they were like, and I'm talking about the Bigfoots. <clears throat> they were not happy. Like, what are these guys doing here? You know, and they sensed them, 
it was cool. It was very, very cool. So very interesting because I'm curious, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, um, I don't know if there's any connection with Neanderthal to uh, Bigfoot, but I actually found out that I had the DNA of Neanderthal. I have like almost two percent. I have ninety three percent more Neanderthal DNA than I than majority of the people in the world, and what? so I thought that was yes. I, I can show you. I, I can show you that. I don't know why Neanderthal. I have this Neanderthal DNA, but you know what's funny? I have a size twelve woman's shoe. I have gigantic feet, and I've always wondered why, why I have okay, big feet. Okay, I'm okay, only five okay. foot six. All right, so where do Neanderthals come from? What yeah, there it's continent yeah. or. You know, honestly, I haven't even researched this, but I know that there's different, you know, different humans, you know, there's, you know, Neanderthal, different homo sapiens and such, you know, so I'm curious, but they don't have like the DNA, do they have the Bigfoots because they haven't had a sample well, or, or have they? And they probably do. And that was one of the reasons, because I have DNA of Bigfoots and I'm just afraid to send it because I will never get it back. If I send it to any one of these DNA places, mm-hmm. you know, they might get it and it might come back not known or it might register in the in the in their computers and then notify the FBI or the CIA and they might come and and retrieve it and then all of a sudden cuz once once you send them the DNA, you sign it off. It it becomes their property. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing I refuse to do is send my DNA or, or the Bigfoot DNA just to anyone. Um, yeah. You know, when when the windows of my truck occurred many, many years ago, I had a couple of people ask me to send me their DNA. And at that point in time, I was very new into the Bigfoot stuff. And, um, and, and, and matter of fact, one of the, one of the persons was Melba Ketchum for all those who understand Bigfoot, you guys know who exactly who I'm talking about. But see, back then I didn't know who she was and I didn't, I, I just didn't want to send the, you know, the DNA and then all of a sudden she could say easily. And again, if she's listening, she used to, you know, listen or watch the show. She could be watching right now. Not, nothing against you, Melba. You have to understand this, but I, I, I think the, the form that I remember seeing from you guys pretty much signed the DNA away and, mm-hmm. and I had no rights to it anymore. And I'm not going to do that. I just, I'm not. Yeah. So, um, and I know I have it. I know, I no doubt I have it because of the windows yeah. of my truck so yeah i um i unfortunately sent my dna off a long time ago just to find out ancestry uh-huh. and boy was i surprised <laughs> and, it, and, and and it actually came back and it said neanderthal yep. on it yep it sure does and i can show i can send you a, a copy of it it shows it's 93 percent more than the rest of the uh, the world population so how- so i they wanted me to do studies and stuff, and I'm like, I am not going to be wait, like doing. Wait, 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 wait. Who called you on that? Uh, the 23andMe, the people. They've sent me numerous emails asking if I would do surveys, maybe do other blood tests. I'm like, Mm-mm, no more. Are you yeah. kidding me? Really? Yeah, I, I can show you all the stuff later. Yeah, man. I I have no idea what it means. You know, I, I just assumed everybody you're, came from there, but you're, you're, yeah. you're freaking alien Bigfoot and everything else. I have a, this is, this is why I was meant to meet you. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much weird stuff that has happened to me in my life and Holy you're the God. only one who gets it and understands. Holy smokes. <laughs> I swear that's awesome. I mean, I want to see that. So yeah, I I need yeah. to come over and you need to show that to me. I mean, that's that's like, are you kidding me right now? Okay, that's yeah. that's just awesome. Okay, um, all right. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let's see. What else do we want to talk about now? Since it's paranormal, um, we don't talk about the stuff we talk. Oh oh oh, um, we talked about the on the on the conspiracy shows about before COVID. You guys remember we used to get together at food places like restaurants and uh, pizza places, and I invite people to come out. Um, you guys, you know, buy your own food, and we sit down uh, on on the tables and and we talk among ourselves and and talk shop, and we talk paranormal stuff, and you know, people throw out questions, and we try to answer them, and vice versa, and and uh, and we meet a lot of cool people. That's how I met Jonique. And um, and and her friends, you know that that Jonique and she came, he came down. 
Okay, hold on just one second, Jeffrey. Beatrice has a question. It's coming up in the chat. Wait, so, wait, wait who's, um, who's Beatrice? <laughs> I think it's our Beatrice. <laughs> Where's she at? Uh, um, I don't see the... I think I saw her name, too. Doggone it. Where'd it go? There she is. She, Woohoo, Jeff, I have a question. Okay, shoot the question. Sorry to interrupt, but we'll get back no. to what he was oh, discussing. No, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> when Beatrice talks, we all listen. Go ahead, Beatrice. Throw your question out. And, I, and there's a minute and a half delay, so we have to wait until it gets to her. Sure. Funny, Jeff. <laughs> Beatrice goes, funny, Jeff. Uh, Jeff. <laughs> Steeler Stacker donating five bucks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank Jeff you. Beatrice had the question. Yep, I see it now. Go ahead, spill it. Sasita. I hope I said that right. Did you ever get the poop tested? Of course I did not get the poop tested. Wait a minute, what poop? Oh, the, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, no, we got, um, when Beatrice went up with us uh, last month, um, we found some poop and I grabbed some poop and I brought the poop home. Um, no, see, Beatrice, you guys have to understand something. Who do you take Bigfoot DNA to to get tested? There is no place. No one has Bigfoot DNA. If you, you just can't take it anywhere. Not even if it's poop or saliva or hair. You just can't take it to your doctors or a pharmacy that, because they don't have, they can test it, but they don't have anything to compare it to. The yeah. only people that can compare what we think we have is the government agencies of the United States of America, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, the military. They have all that underground bases. They have all the DNA. All right. So right now there is nowhere you can take anything, anything that that resembles a Bigfoot hair, skin, anything. You just can't. Um, so I have, like I said, I have a stash of many of them. Um, and one of these days, I don't know how, when, where, hopefully we'll be able to get them tested. Um, so hopefully somebody that works in a DNA lab who become a fan yeah, now, <laughs> and offer to do it on the down low. Well, okay. <laughs> now, since you mentioned that, for all those who have been watching me for years, Mm -hmm. In 2011 is when the incident of my truck happened. And Robin, yeah, that was way before your time. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and so basically what happened is I was camping with a bunch of guys and three of our trucks, we brought three trucks up to our camp spot that we go to that is the spot that we call, right? And um, unfortunately, it started to snow and rain and we had to get out of there really quick. And unfortunately for my truck, I had a Ford, S, a Ford F-150 and the tires kept spinning because it was so muddy that I couldn't take my truck out of there. And my buddy's uh, Jeep didn't want to start. So we had to leave two cars there with all of my equipment. And we had oh. one Toyota Runner that, and we all, it was six of us, and we all piled up in this Toyota Runner and got out of there. Um, it took us about two and a half hours to get out of the spot where it usually takes us 15 minutes to get in. Um, but to make a long story short, I went back three days later to pick up my truck with everybody else. And there was prints on the windows of my truck. There was a face, really? th th there was a face print with eight inch lips and um, six inch nostrils with um, mucus coming down. And it, there was also knuckle prints on the window. Um, and... We all saw that. We all know what it was. I mean, you know, the back of my the back of my truck, there was ice chest full of food and hamburgers and meats and everything you can imagine, and none of that was touched. So it wasn't a bear because a lot of people said that was a bear. No, yeah. no, it wasn't a bear because my truck would have been torn apart. Um, yeah. Now I made. I made world news with this back then. This actually this put me on the map as far as being a Bigfoot investigator. Um, oh, that, okay. that that wasn't the as a matter of fact. A TV show called Monsters and Mysteries actually came down, and they did a whole episode on that incident. You know, they took 
Um, they actually got actors to you know represent us, and it was they did they did okay of a job. They didn't represent the windows accordingly. They were like way off. There was nothing I can do. Um, yes, um, I still have those windows. By the way, I took the windows off my truck, but because it's been so long, they have faded out. But I have pictures in the whole nine yard. Now, you mentioned DNA. So I was on TV, and I was on that show, Monsters and Mysteries, and I got a call a couple of days later from a professor in one of the colleges here in Fresno. He goes, hey. Really? He goes, hey, I just saw your episode on TV. <clears throat> um, you said you still have the windows? I go, yeah. Yeah. And so we met uh, for lunch, me, uh, Alan, myself, and this professor. I'm not going to say who. And I told him the whole story. This guy's a science guy. He doesn't believe in Bigfoot. You know, he's, he's looking at me and he's eating, and you can tell he thinks I'm basically smoking crack. <laughs> okay. So I go, I go, I'm looking to get this thing tested. Um, and I'm not going to just send the DNA to anybody, anywhere, any, you know what I'm saying? So... He goes, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you, um, we picked a date on a weekend, on a Saturday, and he says, bring your windows, and um, I'll see what I can do. And I said, okay. And um, so one Saturday morning, Alan, myself, and his brother Jimmy, we walked in this science room, biology room, in a, in, in a university, uh, in, let's just say in, in a college. And I walked in, and I had, I, I had the windows in, in, in cases, in roller cases, and I took it off, and he looked at me, he goes, Wow, you really got the windows. I'm all, uh, hell, yeah. And uh, so I took him out, and um, he called in several of his students, his bright students, his A-plus students, to come in in the system, and they siphoned the DNA off the windows. And right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look for pictures because I basically um, documented all of this, and I got pictures of the windows. Hold on, let me find it. This was, I, I got like 8,000 photographs on my phone, so bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have so, my, so, so many photographs. It's like crazy. I had, I had to, um, on the iCloud, I had to go and spend $10 a month just to get two terabits because um, of all of the... All the data. Picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it adds there's, up yeah, quick. There's, yep. there's, yeah, there's one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to you know, lose any of this. So let me look for Thank these. Um, pictures. Thank you, American Patriot 14. <laughs> Thank you. 10 bucks. I appreciate that a lot, guys. That helps a lot. It helps, uh, you know, the cost of the internet and electricity, even though my wife pays electricity. <laughs> she, she's not listening. No, she could be listening. She likes to watch the paranormal shows more than the, the conspiracy ones. So, oh, here we go. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just going to put it up. That's all right. All right. Uh, Right. So this gentleman here is taking the DNA off the window. This is where we're at. So you said this was back in 2011. This is, um, oh, shoot. So, yeah, this was um, 2012, maybe. Okay. And um, And they documented all this and... So, so here's my window. There's Alan back there. There's one. This I don't remember what window. This has to be the front window. Um, and I'll show you pictures right now of what, if, if you look at the window itself. Let me find it here. Um, mm -hmm. So what happened is he they got the DNA and they analyzed it and they tried to clean it up and try to see if maybe it was an, an animal that we know. Uh, he, he lives out in the country, and he um, wanted to see maybe it, it was a cow, maybe a dog. Um, so he took DNA samples from his farm animals, and they came back nothing of what he thought it was going to be. And um, and we did it the second time. He said, I think, he says, it, it's coming back half human, half animal. And he goes, maybe it got contaminated. So he says, I need to get DNA samples from you guys to see if maybe you guys got on there. So we swabbed our mouth and we gave it to him and it came back negative again um, to the point where, <clears throat> where um, 
he did it one more time. And he said, you know what? I can't go any further than this because it takes money. And, mm-hmm. and unfortunately, the, the college is, is not going to fork up this kind of money to continue. So we had to stop. So yeah. what I'm going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to show you this picture here. Let me take off the names. I'm going to zoom in. This was the back window. Um, and you probably haven't. You're going to you're going to see it right now, Robin. Um, you can see the the, the eyes and it, it sort of kind of has like a mustache just looking to the left. Hopefully you can make it out. Let me know when you let me know when you see it. Okay, I do see the image now. Okay. 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 Oh yeah. Okay, I don't, I, you see the like the white around its eyes, the the bridge there. Yeah. All right. So I do. so so what happened is the whatever it was peeked into the window and wow, and, that is and, amazing. and 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 he didn't and and it, you know as 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 humans we don't put our hands around our eyes to look into the window right well they don't know that they put the whole face against the window now this was the back window let me show you the front window that is incredible. That that looks like what I would imagine a a Sasquatch exactly. or a Bigfoot to look like. Right. Let me uh, let me find now a good picture of. Um, okay, so show and tell today, guys. I hope you guys are okay. Um, here is the back window. All right, that's how we saw it when I first came, when I first walked up to it, and then this is the front window. This is as you can see, you can see my steering wheel, and you see that right there. You, those are knuckles on the window, and I'll leave that up for a bit so that way you can see it. Um, tell tell me when you see the back window. Okay. Okay, so that's the back window, and then I'm gonna put up the the the, the knuckles of the hand. Let me. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh, that is unbelievable. Okay, there, there, that is some there, of the most amazing images I think okay. I've ever seen. Here, 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 here's here's the back window again. Mhm. And then I'm gonna show you the back window, and then. The front window again. I'm going to okay. Here, here. This is this is here is what is probably that blew all of our minds. And um, so right now, um, the knuckles are still up, right? Okay. Now I'm changing. Yeah, the knuckles, okay. Yeah. The now I'm, I'm changing it to the the back window again. Okay. Yep. Oh okay. my gosh, that right. is so crazy. Okay. I mean, it's so distinct to yep. see. I mean, it's just like you can see almost all the features. Okay. Now, this here is the um the li- do you see the lips? See that right above the sticker? Do you see how it goes? You see if you were if you yeah. were Okay, if you have lipstick and you kiss the window, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so basically what you're what, what you're looking at is you're looking at the nostrils. And mm-hmm. the the nose and the lips. Do you see how the lips? Yep. Do you see the lips though? Yeah, I do. Okay, it's 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 right above the sticker. It, it's like it's it's curved. Um, I know it's hard to see like this, but um, those lips are eight inches long. So we're talking, you know, huge. Yeah. Okay. And then the nostrils are six inches. So if if you're looking at eight inches on the on the uh, lips. The head is probably like this, easy, All right? At least a foot and a half, All right? Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Can I, now, what's interesting too? I mean, this is not even this is this is a whole movie in itself. I wish I wish I could it find is. I wish I could find somebody who could do a, a documentary a movie and eventually we'll do it on this because like I said I have this is not the only evidence that I have 
and let me show you what I am talking about. Um, so the the so when we got back home from the camping trip before all this happened, I had to leave everything in my truck. And as we were driving out in the snow and the sleet, I was in the back seat all crunched up. And I said, oh, and I yelled. I go, oh, my God. And everybody goes, what? He goes, I forgot my laptop computer in the back seat. And I'm going, that has my life in it. And then there's no way we can go back because we were already on the way home. And, um, yeah. and uh, so it's like I am, like, freaking out right now. I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I get home. I tell Shell what happened. And she goes, what? And, uh, and um and, and I told her I left my computer in the back seat. And she goes, you dummy. I go, I know. So I, I call Alan, and I go, Alan, you got to do me a favor, man. Tomorrow. Robot voice. What happened? They said, uh, Pat says robot voice again. No. Um, yeah. What? I'm not even talking up that loud. Okay, let me reset it. Hold on. Okay. I'm not even lowering the volume. I, I mean, I'm not even talking loud at all. Wow. Okay, check one, two, three. I should be clean now. <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully we'll we'll hear okay. in a moment. Yeah. So we'll uh, wait a little bit here, and see what yeah. they, see what they say. Yeah. Adolf had sent or met, wrote something. He wrote something about uh, being sensitive and such. So I wanted to let him know I did see that. I didn't have a chance to to say anything. But yes, uh, the, yes to all those. <laughs> okay. All right, they say it's better now. Okay, so good. So we're we're at home now, and I call Alan, my buddy, and I said, "Can you please take me up so I can?" I'm all gonna, better. All better. Okay, so we yep. so we have to walk. I have to literally walk two and a half miles in because the gates are locked, and there's no and not the gates are locked. Locked. You can't get in because it's just the, the roads are the are just are muddy, sleet, snow. There's no way I'd be able to get in there with with this van. So I asked Alan. Can you find somebody to go with me? Because Alan walks with a cane. There's no way he'd be able to walk two and, a half, two and a half miles. And he said, yeah, let me call my brother Jimmy. And his brother Jimmy agreed to go with me. So we drive up the next day, and um, we park at the top of the, uh, of the entrance, and Jimmy and I start to walk in. Um, Jimmy has um, the shotgun. I have the 9mm, and, and I have a video camera. And so we're walk, 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 walk. And as we're getting closer to where my trucks are at, we start to find these trees that were placed in the dirt road. And you have to understand, we were just there the day before, and these trees were not there. We didn't put them on the, tr on the road. <clears throat> I'm looking around. There's no footprints. There's nothing. I'm going, why are these trees barricades in the dirt road? So I go, Jimmy, this wasn't here yesterday. And he goes, really? I go, yeah. So I, took a pic I take a picture. We keep walking. And then we find another one. And then we find this. Something actually dragged it off the side and placed it right in the middle of the, of the road. And, and, and you can see, hmm. okay, and I'm going, what the heck is going on here? That wasn't here last night when we left. And I'm going, but no one has been back here because you can't drive back here. And what would be the purpose of somebody to place these in the middle of the road, right? This is nothing. So we go yeah, again. But... We're, we're, we're walking, we're walking, and I find this again. Some, some, something placed a, a tree, a small little tree across the dirt road. This, if you think about it, what would be the purpose of some? someone placing these on the dirt road. It, it's, it's not going to prevent anybody from driving in, right? It's not. So I go, Jimmy, this wasn't here either. And he goes, shut up. I'm going, yeah, I know. I... So I take a picture and we continue on. And then right before we get to the campsite, I find the biggest log. It was 14 feet long, probably 12 and a half, uh, 14, 15 inch circumference. This log was placed in the middle of the road. And if you can look, if you look to the right of that log, you see the indentation where, where it was before. You see it right there. Okay. Now you have to understand something. It's uphill. So this log did not roll uphill. And it's going to come right now. I'll show you. There it is. It did not roll uphill. And on top of that, there are 
broken where where the where the uh, twigs and and the branches used to be on this log. It's still peak, you know peeking out about four or five inches on the log, and so you can't really roll it because it's going to stop from rolling because you have these. Okay, now something picked it up and placed it right in the middle of that dirt road. All right, so I tried pushing it out of the way. I couldn't. I go, who in the hell did this? Now, after we get, to, you know, we arrived at the truck, we pick up, you know, I, I got my laptop computer and I looked around the truck and there was no, nothing on the windows, nothing. It was completely clean. All right. I looked, now check this out. I looked in the, the windows of the driver's side and the passenger side. I looked inside, you know, like a human would. Um, mm-hmm. To see, oh, there's my laptop, and I opened up the door. I grabbed the computer out, and I got a couple of waters out from the ice chest in the back. And it had snowed and rained that night, so the the truck was perfect. It looked like it just had a car wash, and there was I mean, there was no mud, nothing around it. And um, so I got the laptop, put it in my backpack, and we walked out. And at, when we got to the very top, <clears throat> I showed Alan. I go, Alan, look at all these brand, the, the, the the trees that were placed in this in the uh, dirt road. And he says, oh, my God. He goes, you know who does that? And I go, who? I go, Bigfoot. And I go, why? To keep you out of their area. Mm-hmm. They do that to keep you out of the area. And I'm going, well, <clears throat> I, oh, okay. You know, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming he knew what I was talking about. So I get home. And my buddy David Raygosa called me. He goes, Jeff, we're going tomorrow to get our truck. I'm like, oh, my God. I just walked in all the And I go, yeah, of course I'm going with you. I have to get my truck. So the next day. We all met, meet up there at the staging area, and we uh, hopped in one, one truck, in, in the back of the truck and inside the truck, and because he, he had a 4x4, four four, and we started to trek in. And I told the guys what I had found the night before, the day before. And as we were arriving to the, you know, the knockdown of the trees, I showed everybody, and they're all tripping out, going, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And we, put, you know, we got them, pushed them out of the way. The, the log, the 14-foot log, it took five of us on our knees to push that out of the way. We could not. I mean, not. I mean, it took us. I mean, it took whatever we had. We were on our knees and we were disrupting the dirt. And it's like, who in the hell? Well, we all know who put that log there. Okay, yeah. we all did. So then we got to the spot where the trucks are at. I get out. I start walking, and I'm looking around for footprints. And all of a sudden, I look at my truck, and then I see. The, the face prints and everything on my windows. And I freaked out and I yelled, you guys quit, come over here. And I said, that wasn't here yesterday. And they're looking at that and they're going, oh my God. So. Yeah, that is incredible that, story. I mean, yeah. that, I mean, and there's like the uh, other stuff happens there as well. But I mean, I know. And the only thing I can think of is that the Bigfoots were watching me when we arrived walking in because they see they see me looking in the window, mm-hmm. right? And they're probably going, wait a minute, why are they not taking the trucks? Why are they not taking the trucks? And so I got, you know, what I came for and I started walking out and they probably came up, you know, and they probably went and they looked in the window, you know, and they said, what, the, what are they looking in the window, you know? And they left the mm-hmm. oil oil residue and the snot and all that on the window. I'm like, oh, my God. So we had a big um, press conference at the, at the Piccadilly Inn, um, and, and, and all of the major news networks came over, and, and we did a press conference, and that story went worldwide. I, I got calls from all over the world, and I was doing interviews with everybody. And this, this here put me on the map. Um, and um, a lot, everybody knows what it was. I mean, there's no doubt in our mind what it was. And then that's when I started. Yeah. In. So, like I said, the, you know. The, that image of the face up in the corner, uh, that is, I mean, it, it's just, it, it is unbelievable. That is exactly <laughs> what a kind of evidence that just makes me so convinced. Yeah. You I, know, that, it, I mean. I, I mean, um, I heard that you pay it. Uh, and um, um, but yeah, it's it's no wait. Did Beatrice have a a question? Did she have that question yet? I, I oh, didn't see she, a question. She was asking about the poop. Remember? Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The poop. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I I can't I can't get any of this stuff tested, um, in, yeah. until we find the right person. <laughs> um, 
so uh, Leonard said, until we until we have a specimen to to test the de uh, like an actual like deceased or like Bigfoot or some right. live subject, you right, know. Right. <laughs> yeah, and and that will probably never happen until you actually have a body. And yeah. once you have the body, then the scientists could take the you know the DNA and the blood and the skin samples and all of that, um, and uh, and then then at that point in time you can have something to work with. And I'm sure yeah. I can tell you right now the government has already stuff to work with, and they're just not going to tell us. Yeah, I know <laughs> Leonard sent me that. <laughs> um. <laughs> ah, scary. <laughs> My childhood nightmares. <laughs> God, why would oh, you be? That's yeah. that's funny. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, that Bigfoot resembled Grimace. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you have to wonder where do they get the ideas for these costumes, like for for Chewbacca from mm -hmm. Star Wars. Where do they get the idea for that? Yeah, you know, it it, it has to, it has to come from someplace, you guys. It does. All right, let me take a drink. Well, that is a great. That is great. I. You know, I've seen a lot of your shows, you know, and I never saw that image. I never knew anything about it. How long has it been since you talked about that um, or showed those images? See, and, and that's just it. When it happened, obviously I talked about it a lot, and then I just put, yeah. I put it away. But I realized people, new people come in and go. So I've been doing this for 15 years, all right, and, and I have shown, I have talked about, you know, it's funny on the internet right now. Everybody is is showing stuff like from CERN and just about movies and in general. I talked about all of that years and years and years ago. And for those who have been watching me, you know, people send me stuff. They go, Jeff, you remember when you talked about this ten years ago? I'm going, yeah. And then people are yeah. barely, people are barely, you know, um, barely figuring this stuff out. Which we have robot voice again. <laughs> Why? 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 Yeah, I would. I shouldn't. The volume one hundred percent. Check one, two, three. Check. Okay, we're gonna go there. All right, it should be clear now. All right. Um. So. So yeah. I mean. Um. You know. I. I. I have talked about this already. All of this stuff, and I have talked about this several times and then, then I'll put it and then I won't talk about it for a couple of years but and then somebody will have a, a question about it then I'll bring it up again but like you you know you're only what two or three years into my show I think so yeah about three years yeah so yeah. there is so much that that you have no clue and when I'm talking about doing episodes for TV I have 15 years of content that that we need to talk about and show. Yeah. I mean, we do. I have so much. Um, I, I remember when um, my show was starting on the Fox Network here in Fresno, and I went in on the, on the morning show and talked with Kopi and uh, the blonde, the blondie, I forgot her name, and I sat down with them, and Kopi looked at me and says, so do you have enough, you know, con con content for a show? And I'm looking at him, I'm like, <laughs> and if you only knew Kopi, um, because they don't watch my shows, and, and I understand that, and they just have no idea what's happening here on the valley floor of California, of Central Valley, and there's yep. so so much. I mean, I'm not talking big, but I'm talking aliens and families of Bigfoots and and um, the um, the night crawlers and trolls and oh my God, dogman and werewolves. Um, we have Duende in my backyard, <laughs> the uh, little troll, yeah, like it, gnome it, things. Yeah, yeah. And, and see, and Beatrice has trolls and 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 fairies on her yard, mm -hmm. you know, which is kind of weird that that happens because it looks like maybe, because you guys both have the gift, maybe they are attracted to that. Yeah, because very she possible. she has a, she has that too. She says they they see fairies, um, uh, on and in the backyard or the front yard all the time. And it's like, you know, why? Well, maybe now since you see these things, maybe it has something to do with you guys' gifts because it allows you to see them. Yeah. Well, I think that with your 15 years of knowledge and gathering information, 
And, uh, you know, I have, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I haven't told you about my life. So this is, I think we have great content for shows and I yes. think we're going to keep people very entertained for a long time. <laughs> a, a, a long time is right. I can see definitely three or four seasons easy, but see, you, easy. Have, to, you have to understand once we finish here in the Valley, then we can go out further now to other states because I have other stories from other states that I just, you know, I, I put them in the back burner for future. Um, yeah. And, and um, there's going to be times that we can go out of state once we have a budget and the whole nine yards because we have, so I have probably the best content that anybody has out there. I do. I know I do. And that's why everybody hates me. And I'm not trying to be conceited. That's um, true. But, but I have the best SHIT. And it's only because I, you know, when I first started, I, I, I set it up correctly. The 24-hour hotline. Um, when something happens, I roll on it. I go out and investigate. And I get pictures. I get evidence. I get video. That, and, and that's what I do. I don't just write books about other stories. I, I'm, I can't wait to write a book. Um, so did you say you write books? No, <laughs> no, I no. don't write, oh. but somebody, <laughs> my posts are like books. They're very <laughs> some, long winded. <laughs> some, somebody said, uh, there was somebody that I ran into not too long ago that that person can write a book for me and I forgot who it was. So if you're listening, if you are the one text me because I know I spoke to somebody um, you know, I'm thinking maybe pretty soon we should start writing this book before we get on TV. So that way, when I get the TV gig, then I can sell the book. So, um, but there's just, I got so much to, to show and tell. I mean, it's as simple as that. So, all right. Um, what else do well, we Before have we got about? interrupted earlier, we were going to talk about a gathering. For... Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, Four or five years ago, I used to get together with um, fans, and we used to go meet up in different places. Uh, me and Ed's was one of the big ones, uh, and I wanted to start doing that again. And uh, Robin is new, obviously, so I want everybody to come out and say hi to Robin and and do what we do, do what we did last time is just sit down, talk shop, people tell their stories. Beatrice comes and Beatrice reads people. And, and, and that happens all the time. And that's cool because, you know, I remember Adolf came um, and he read, she read Adolf and, and, and Adolf got scared shitless because Beatrice hit it on the head with, with Adolf, you know. Um, and then also, um, what's his name from Fire in the Sky? He actually came down to Fresno one day, um, Steve Pierce. He was one of the guys who was with um, Travis Walton on that movie Fire in the Sky. He actually came yeah. to Fresno, and we had pizza, and Beatrice showed up, and Beatrice started to read him, and Steve Pierce got up and walked out like, what the frack, you know, and there's some, there's things that she said about him that no one knew, and I'm going to say that say this right now, but they all got abducted that night. It wasn't just Travis Walton, and Steve Pierce knows that, and that's why he walked out like, oh my God, oh my God, nobody knows this, nobody knows this, and Beatrice got it he goes all you guys were abducted but they kept travis walton they kept him and threw all you guys back out because mm -hmm. you guys all, all everybody was uh, strong-headed travis walton wasn't he was the weakest so they kept him and uh steve oh, pierce yeah. freaked out <laughs> so so anyway that 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 like i said beatrice will come over we'll have pizza and then you know it's like she really she'll just go up to a person and say i gotta talk to you or I got to talk to you, you know, and that's how it works. So it, it's pretty fun. R robot wonderful. voice again? No way. Pat, or how are we on the voice? You're good. He says okay. good. Okay. So. All right. So what we're going to do is not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, we're going to get together at the Me and Ed's at the Tower District at 5.30 p.m. The Tower District at 5.30 p.m. Me and Ed's Pizza right behind the uh, Tower Theater. Um, next Saturday, not in two days from now, but the following Saturday, which is um, one, two, Today's three, Thursday. four, fourth. Is that the fourth, September fourth? Uh, no, that's the third. The, the third. Is it the, third? The, the, yeah. the, 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 September fifth is a Monday. That's Labor Day. So fourth, third. Yeah, third. 
So let's do this, it'll, right? It will be it will be great. I'm yeah. looking forward to meeting people in person. Um, I do have some gifts, not quite like our friend Beatrice here, but I will do my best, you know. And I just want to meet people and you know just talk about things that you want to hear about on the show. Now, you know? now Beatrice, Beatrice is in the chat, and she says, "Robin, let's get together before the greet." I think that's a good idea. So she, I gave her my number. She okay. has it. So we will get together and um, <laughs> plan something. Okay. And then I, I'm uh, looking forward to this. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> um, if you're looking at chat right now, Beatrice posted, Steve Pierce blocked me, Elijah, and Selena. Um, the guy from, really? from, yeah, because they freaked Steve Pierce out. He, she called him out on things that the world never knew, that they were all abducted. And that in the movie has no, there's nothing in there that says anything about that, and um, and uh, but yeah, but that yeah, la la Labor Day weekend, so Saturday at five thirty, Labor Day weekend. Um, I figured a lot of people aren't going to go out, you know, because the cost of fuel, and so that Saturday at five thirty is going to be a good time to, to get together. All right, uh, what else? What else? What else? You want to talk? Um, yeah. You want to talk about the flat earth just for a bit? Sure, yeah. Um, I'll put up now, I'll go ahead and put up a image. And I sort of kind of, and, and I think this was on the conspiracy show, but I sort of kind of, um, a couple months ago, I brought in a couple of balls in here and I sh basically gave you my theory, my idea of the flat earth. I'm not a flat earther. I don't think the earth is flat with the dome on it, all right? I don't think so. I just, I think that the Earth is a lot bigger than what we are being told, all right? So here is a image of a large planet, and there is what we call Earth, surrounded by a wall of ice. And if you go on beyond that wall of ice, you're going to have more land around this particular planet that we call Earth. That's what I think is happening. Okay. If you look at the UN uh, posters that they have on their walls, they have this image surrounded by the wall of ice. And, and it seems like it goes out even further than that. And I think that's what's happening. I think that you guys, we have been told lies since the very beginning of time. You guys have to understand that. We have been told lies. When, if and when disclosure comes, people are going to freak out. I mean, it's not going to be just about flat earth. It's going to be a lot of other stuff. You know, the stuff that we talk about here. You know, Bigfoot and yeah. aliens. People are, are not going to be able to handle this. Um, it's, it's fascinating, honestly, because that image, I think I mentioned in the last time you showed me that, it would, it would barely be one fourth of the earth. So, I mean, just think about if we've only explored a quarter of the earth, I mean, how much else would be out there? Different species of animals, maybe even no, other humans. No, no. <laughs> I, I think there are. And, and, um, and I think the elites of the world, you know, I think they know that. Yeah. I think the presidents know that. I think, <clears throat> I think they all know what's on the other side of that ice wall. And they're keeping it secret. Uh, and I was telling you on the last show, Buzz Aldrin, from what I understand, took a trip out mm -hmm. to Antarctica. And when he was out there, he had a heart attack or a stroke, and, and they had to bring him back. And, and rumors were that he saw something that scared him almost to death and what he saw. Um, and who knows what that, what, that, what that can be? You know, I, I don't know. He saw something that really frightened him, that changed his whole perspective on life. Like, oh, my God, this is not all. <laughs> what we have here is there's way more to it. I mean, these... Now, what I was going to say, do they, when people try to go fly over that ice wall or whatever, are they... Like intercepted by military well, and told well, to be well, turned around. Or? Well, well, see, that's just that's just it. You can't because you don't have enough fuel to get over mm -hmm. there and come back. Now they have, mm -hmm. I think they have an airport in Antarctica that belongs to the military where you can fly there and land and refuel and come back. But you just can't fly out there and then come back because then you'll you'll 
you'll take a nosedive if you'll run out of fuel. Yeah. So, um, and and that's basically that, that's basically it. <clears throat> and, and again, if you look, if you remember Transformers, where did they find um, uh, the the robot in Antarctica? I think it was right. It, it, it had crash landing in Antarctica, and um, and uh, what was that? The, uh, the 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 bad dude. And they put him on the ship, and they brought him back, and they had him on ice. Where do they have him on ice? Underneath Hoover Dam. Yep, I remember the the uh, fire or something. The I, I'm having a brain fart. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I I think it is uh, definitely. Oh, op- no, not Optimus Prime. What's uh, what's the bad dude? Hold on, let, let me um. What is? I'm ta- I'm asking Christian because he's the big Transformer freak. What is? <laughs> The Transformer in the Ice name. I'm pretty sure somebody's going to tell me it really quick. Megatron. Megatron. There you go. Thank you, Jaden. Jaden. Megatron, right? And Mm -hmm. a giant robot in Antarctica. So think about this. They're giving us hints, guys. I swear they are. You just got to Megatron. Yeah, Christian goes, Megatron. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, th- there, there's hints out there in these movies. You just have to pay attention. I mean, Transformers, there's a lot. I mean, I don't want to say a lot, but the Hoover Dam, we were talking about Hoover Dam, and then the AllSpark, um, you know, and all of a sudden we, we look at these, these, I don't know, gargoyle, I don't know what they are, statues with big wings. I mean, what the hell are yeah. they doing? You know, it's just... I believe I sent you something that somebody had uh, sent me yeah. regarding those statues, the the artist mm-hmm. that did those. But I guess he they're very he's very deep into like he was into aliens and all kinds of other stuff too. I haven't done enough research on yeah, that guy, either. but uh, the the guy who built those statues. But I only had that that little article. But it's it's a good starting point. So if I find out any other information, now did I'll did, share it did we show the statues here on conspiracy or paranormal? Do you remember? I I think it was only on conspiracy. I don't oh, think we crap. shared that here. Yeah. Then let me let me pull that up here, and I think Leonard sent me a picture a while back. Let me. It's really easy to access. Let me get that real quick. There it is. So this, you guys, if you guys want to do research. There is two statues at the top of Hoover Dam. All right. And very odd looking statues, very tall guys with wings. And there's two of them. And there's also some writing on some marble that now, now they're actually doing something on top of, this, uh, of the Hoover Dam. And they actually covered a lot of this up. And it's kind of weird because they had just had an explosion there about a month ago. And people were going, oh, my God, it's going to be a false flag. Something's going on. Something. Somebody drove on top of Hoover Dam and took some video of these statues that I never knew existed there. Um, and they Same put it, here. And they, I had no clue. Yeah, and they put it on the Internet. And people took that and just went off. And they just started, you know, rumors and speculations and why are these there? Um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I don't know. But, um, but well, let, let's, I found out. About the guy's name was Oscar O S K A R J W Hansen, and uh, he was the one that uh, he was born in 1892. So I'm not sure exactly when they put those in, because uh, I don't know when they built the the, the dam. But uh, he, uh, let's see here, it said something along the lines. Let's see here, uh, he. Oscar's story is fascinating, includes archaeological expeditions, world-famous artists, connections to nine U.S. presidents, alien theories, astrophysical discoveries, and a holy grail quest. So this guy was into all that stuff. So I think this is going to be a deep dive for me because that all sounds pretty compelling. (laughs) Okay, you got a job to figure out what the hell this is all about. Exactly. So, so this is, that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. I mean, this is sounding like um, um, Raiders of the Lost Dark. You know, what's his name? I mean, uh-huh. he, it seemed like he was into all of that. So that's very, very compelling. 
go for it man. see what you can find out about it yeah i will i'll start digging i can't guarantee it it'll be quick no no because no, no, you know no. it's one of those things but you know hopefully in a, maybe within a month or so i'll have enough that we can do a whole show on what i find absolutely so. yep i i'm i totally uh yeah take your time take your time and find out what you can <laughs> and then when you when you're ready just okay i got some information and, and break it we'll go there perfect <laughs> All right. Um, so we're at one hour and a half, just about. We talked a lot. Um, anything that we are missing? No, not really. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Yeah, um, it was basically a Bigfoot show, and yeah. you impressed me, Jeff. I like I said that image. I, I need to get that uh, picture. That picture just no, no, for I'll, my. I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, yeah, I mean, I'll send you all the stuff. It's no big deal. I mean, yeah. I got it all. I mean, I, I still have the windows, obviously. And they're um, in a case, but over the years, it's just that the, the, it's disintegrated. The image is, is pretty much gone now. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, there has been some some very cool things that have happened to my team and myself over the past years that I can honestly say that no one probably has ever experienced the stuff that we have, especially in Bigfoot. I mean, it's just... You know, we've had I've, I've had a Bigfoot hit me on the side of the head through the tent. You know, that stuff is awesome. I've lost time with Alan. You know, it's like it's like, yeah, <laughs> I can uh, I mean, I can go on and on and on. But uh, that's what TV yep. is going to be for. And I can't wait for that. It is. We're going to we're going to have some great adventures together. Yep. So I look forward to this. <laughs> yep, absolutely. It's, it's going to be fun. All right, you guys, that's it. We're done. Um, I appreciate you guys all tuning in. We will be back next Thursday again at 7 o'clock. For those who want to watch our conspiracy shows, go watch them on Rumble. And if you get offended very easily, then I would suggest you don't watch the conspiracy shows because we talk about religion and politics and Obama and Bush and Trump. And we talk about all of that. And a lot of people don't like that. And I understand totally. So that show might not be for you. But if you like the paranormal, then stick with us here on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. with Robin and myself. And um, we'll keep doing what we're doing. And uh, in September, we'll get Robin in here when it gets nice and cool. And we'll start doing live shows from the studio. All right. Yes. Thank well, you, Robin. Thank you very much. All right. We'll see you, you, we'll you. St well, for, the, uh, for the conspiracy show. We'll see you on Sunday, right? Sounds good. Okay. See you Sunday. Okay, Bye, everybody. See ya.